Hey, Jack. How many ohms do you think the Honeywell Glowfly will be once it's refrigerated to 40 degrees? That's what I think too, buddy. I have a Glowfly igniter from Honeywell right here. And we're going to do a little bit of an experiment to see how the ohm reading is affected by temperature. So I'm going to turn on the PDT650 from UEI. You can see that it is 55 degrees in here. We have turned on the UEI DL429B. That's their flagship multimeter. We're going to turn on, not tone, but resistance. And as you can see, it's going to display 49.3 ohms. I left it inside of the little container here just because I didn't want it to get damaged. So at 55 degrees, we're at 49.3 ohms on the Glowfly. But let's check and see how the Glowfly does in different circumstances. Guys, we're now at 70.3 degrees. We're going to turn on the DL429B. See where it's set up. We'll turn it back to resistance. And as you can see, we're at 50.7. So it goes up just a little bit, that 15 degrees. So not a whole lot on the Glowfly. So that's kind of good. So troubleshooting it will be more universal if it stays relatively similar throughout a temperature range. So let's step it down a notch and put it in some really cold temperatures and see how it does. All right, let's go check on our little project here. Temperature was 42.6 so far. You see we're down in there beyond the pepperonis. So 42 is going up a little bit now to have the door open, but it was in the low 40s. And as you guys can see, we're right in there at about 48. So it doesn't change an awful lot at all. So that's really good, I think. So troubleshooting the Honeywell Glowfly, if you get out of the 40 to 50 range, it looks like maybe it has a problem. This little experiment proved that the Glowfly is pretty consistent in ohms range between about 40 degrees and 70 degrees, which is gonna be a lot of where we're at. Guys, I now have a different igniter here, still inside the wrapper because I don't want to damage it. This is a hot surface igniter for a G6 series residential Nordine furnace. I had this thing for a long time, it's just been sitting here. So I wanted to kind of check it out too, and we're almost the same temperature here now. 56.1. I'm going to turn on the DL429. Turn on the backlight. Let's see how many ohms we are. It looks like... We are 16 ohms, so quite a significant difference from igniter to igniter. Not going into specifics of which igniter is which type and all that stuff, just kind of getting a feel for how the variation might be. So we have right around 16 ohms at 15.5 degrees. So let's go ahead and pop it into the freezer. And that's what we'll do this time. We'll pop this one into the freezer and see how it reacts. I have it in the freezer now, as we can see. It got down to around nine degrees before I took it out. It's a little bit warmer now. Of course, it's popping up. Is it nine degrees? First time I went in there. So we're gonna turn this on. See what our ohm reading is. Keeping in mind, you know, it was 16 before. So 15.1. It went down about one ohm. So it's not making a really big difference with that extreme temperature difference. So as you can see, neither one of these really vary that much with temperature. So maybe that needs to factor into the diagnosis that we make as far as igniters. Maybe it doesn't play as big a role in determining if they failed or not. The ohm reading by itself being high may not directly correlate to a high temperature. So just some food for thought. Let me know what you think in the comments. We may expand on this in the future. Until then, I'll see you on the next one.